Hi guys, so welcome to this talk about Spring Boon and Kotlin. Um, I talked yesterday, but uh, yesterday last year, but probably you weren't there. I was also talking about Kotlin, so I'm a, I'm a consultant. So that means basically I'm uh, like a slave to the customer and I do whatever he wants. And to have fun in my life, I write books, I do talks, I write blogs, I, well, you know what I mean. I work for a little startup called SAP. Um, SAP. Um, I actually worked for a company called Hybris, which was bought by SAP. And uh, like last week, it was announced that uh, Hybris was just rebranded as SAP Customer Experience. So this T-shirt that you see here is the last one of its kind. It's like in, in a few years, it will be super expensive. Um, I work um, uh, in a consulting unit. So basically, we take the Hybris product, which is, oh, sorry, the SAP Customer Experience Commerce product, um, which is an is a e-commerce platform, and we integrate it into our customer uh, information system. And uh, it's based on, on Java and Spring, so I, I am basically a Java developer. Oh, interesting. That's super interesting. That <laughs> that's amazingly interesting. Um, I have no clue why, but this is... Um, I, I will talk about Spring Boot without any slides, which is always fun. Um, who knows about the Spring Framework? Everybody. Okay, so the Spring Framework is basically you take the picture. This is like um, a, a, um, a chicken, which you... Uh, and there are ingredients. Uh, uh, everywhere, and you have to, to, to make the chicken yourself. You have to cook it yourself. Um, I, I've worked with a Spring Framework since perhaps five and s or six years, and basically when you have to create uh, a Spring project, not without Spring Boot, um, it takes you like some time to get the POM rolling. So basically I told my team, hey guys, yeah, go, go take some days off, I will take care of the POM, I will craft the dependency, get the right version, configure all the plugins, and then come back in like one or two days, and I have my nice POM and everything works fine. And now, picture yourself, this is a cooked chicken, um, and this is Spring Boot, basically. Uh, so Spring Boot, you, you can really have your, your project working in a, in a matter of minutes, not, not hours or days. Who here, here already uses Spring Boot? Uh, so not as many as Spring user, which is good. So it, you, you, you kickstart your project very, very fast, and also there is good stuff about Spring Boot that you have like ready-to-use features. Like if you know about the actuator, which basically lets you monitor your application in production, I mean, it's really crazy, because before you had to do it by hand. Who uses the actuator? Who knows the actuator? Guys, if you don't know the actuator, ju just and you are a Spring Boot user, you have to check it just after this talk, because it's really, really very, very important. I have no clue why, but all my slides now have becoming blank, so I will just try to do something that perhaps we... No, really? Oh. I will restart, because that's not that great if it happens. If you don't mind. Because um, pictures are important. Pictures let you, yeah, and now it works. So I didn't lie. Okay, and now comes Kotlin. And as you know, Kotlin is uh, a language that has been designed by JetBrains. If you are IntelliJ users, you know about JetBrains. If you are not IntelliJ user, you might know about JetBrains. So it, it, they had this problem that they had this like gigantic IDE, and they had like millions of lines of code of Java codes, and they, it was very hard to maintain because, yeah, Java, you know, is not that easy to read. Um, and uh, so they wanted a better language and they created Kotlin. The good thing is that uh, Kotlin is open source, so if you are afraid that, yes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it, will, it might die, 
uh, yeah, you will still be able like to, to bring it to the Apache Foundation and work on it. Uh, right now, it compiles to, to GVM bytecodes and to, to JavaScript, so you can create like really like full stack projects with only Kotlin. One on one side, it will compile to to GVM bytecode on the other side to JavaScript, so you can have the, the, the really full stack in Kotlin. And there are some experiments right now to compile it to native code, so basically to run on directly on the machine. I like to say that for me, like Kotlin is a simpler Scala, because I tried Scala some years ago. I found it very interesting. It changed my way to write my Java code. But, I mean, you can do a lot, and you can do a lot in a lot of different ways. So basically, at the end, it's very hard for one Scala developer to read something that another Scala developer might have written, unless you have very, 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 like, very strong guidelines, which in Kotlin is not the case. Kotlin doesn't try to invent, to reinvent the wheel. Kotlin is, is really like, reuse this concept that is found in other languages that are proven. Like, it's functional and object-oriented, so um, if you do Scala already, it's very easy. It's statically typed. I'm like, I'm a Java developer. When I have to write JavaScript, really, I mean, uh, kitten dies every time because I like my types. I don't want to write tests to be sure that I didn't introduce any bug because of lack of type. Um, there is null safety baked in. You don't need to like uh, check for null because if you know that it's not null, you don't need to. No checks exceptions, checked exceptions. Sorry. So that is very interesting. Like Java introduced this concept of exceptions, that was very interesting. But I mean, if you have like developed with checked exceptions, it's really very boring. It's it's not that great. You have to to write a lot of boilerplate code now. Modern languages, they don't have checked exceptions, they only have runtime. Kotlin takes the same road. You have name and optional arguments. I will talk about it in my demo. You have lambdas, of course. Of course, now you have to have like some degree of lambdas in every language. You have to have extension and properties and function. I will demo it just afterwards. It's really amazing. And of course, the biggest point, the biggest selling point is you have 100% Java compatibility, which means that if you wants to migrate to Kotlin, you can start in one part of your project and migrate bit by bit. You don't need to start with a full-fledged Kotlin project. That is, in my opinion, a very, very high selling point. So as I told, for me the killer feature is extension methods and to a lesser degree extension properties. And I will show demo which is better than ten, like a lot of words. So let's imagine that uh, you have like, uh, in Java, you know, you have to uppercase, to lowercase. I don't think there is a capitalized method. So let's imagine you want to create a capitalized method. How do you do it? You create a static method in a class because in Java, everything must belong to a class. And there is no way to just like add behavior to the string class because it's final. So basically, if you want to use this string util class, you must lay, oh, sorry. Now you must say like string foo equals foo, and then string capitalize equals string utils, utils dot capitalize of foo. Mm, something like that. Okay, who thinks this is object oriented? But everybody we tells you, we will tell you that Java is really an object-oriented language, and how you, you do write that a lot. Who has ever written a string utils class? Yeah, half the room. Yeah, nearly all the room. <laughs> that utils class? Yeah, the same one. So you know what I mean. It, it, it's not that great. Um, so the first thing that in, in Kotlin, I mean, you are not forced. Who here has never ever seen a line of Kotlin? Okay, so I need to do that, so it's a good idea to ask. First thing, I'm not forced to use a class. Because when you have string utils, capitalized methods, well, it can be in any class, it can be anywhere. 
So here we have functions that are not related to classes. It's in, in the package namespace. It's not related to a class. And it makes sense. OK? So it's the same codes. I won't go into the detail. The main class as well, I don't need to put it into any class. The main method and entry point, I can write the same. And I can write val foo equals foo. And I can write val bor, e uh, sorry, I call it c, equals capitalize.foo. So good stuff. I don't need semicolon at the end. Easy. You remember that with Java 10, like Java developers are so happy that finally they have the val keyword. They don't need to write the types twice. Well, it's backed in into Kotlin. And not only on local types, but if I create a class foo, I can also have vol here of string. And the difference is like in Scala. As I told you, they reuse a lot of stuff. So there is a difference between vol and var. Basically, vol means that it will never change. It's immutable. The reference is immutable, not the object itself. And var means that it can be later changed. So I can do something like that. Here I say val foo and val c, but I can see var foo, and I can like reaffect foo here. But because, in general, we prefer to do like functional-oriented stuff in Kotlin, if possible, we try to use immutable stuff. So in general, var is like, <laughs> it's not great. It's cot smell. So anyway, this is what I, I, it's the same code that you would have in Java, but with extension function. Basically, we can write that star kind of stuff, like string dot capitalize. And we can say this, this, this. And here we can say foo dot capitalize. For me, that's a killer feature. For me, that's if, if you want to write really object-oriented code, you use Kotlin or Scala. But you cannot pretend that you are a Java, de Java developer, that you are doing object-oriented code and write static methods in utils class. And there is no magic involved. In the end, in the bytecode, it will be a utils class. But you don't care about the bytecode, right? You care about what you write. So this is a very nice way, in my opinion, to like really improve your code. So for, for me, this is really a killer feature. Uh, another killer feature would be like, uh, I can go back in time and make it like this. And I say, OK, here, if I, was in Java, uh, if I were in Java, I would say if string is not null, because null can be passed. Mm -hmm. So if string not null, then return blah, blah, blah. Else return null. Else return up. What, why else? I hate that. Return null, like that. Um, and here you see that I cannot return null, and here it tells me it cannot be null. Why? Because I told you there is like this null safety. So there is a diff different type for every type that can be null. Here I can say it can be null, and here it say I can be null. This makes sense. And because here it's not null, now it has been like casted to a non-null type automatically by the compiler. You see, it's green. Tells me smart cost. Of course, I don't need to do it because here I say, oh, this cannot be null. And here I can have like here I can say I have a var foo equals uh, of type string. Perhaps it can be null. Perhaps it's not null. 
But because it can be null, it can not be passed to a function that requires a non-nullable string. Crazy. OK, let's go further. This is really like basic Kotlin stuff that the reason why you should love Kotlin already. Who loves Kotlin already? Yeah, me as well. Great. So extension method, blah, blah, blah. So um, Kotlin, Kotlin is more expressive than Java. In a few lines of code, you can express much more, but with the same degree of readability. Because in some, in so, some languages that are very concise, like Scala, I mean, you can write a lot of stuff into one character. I mean, you cannot read them as well. Uh, here, I think that it's the sweet spot between the conciseness and the readability. It, it, it's improved a lot your object-oriented code because of the extension method, and it's functional too. OK, time for some demo about like Spring Boot and Kotlin, because you are here for that, not only about Kotlin. I can remove this class. I can remove this class as well. So first thing is, sorry. Oof. First thing is you go on start.spring.io. Who knows about start.spring.io? Nearly everyone, OK? You go there, and every time you can see that you can create a project with Kotlin. Kotlin is a first-class citizen in the Spring ecosystem, the Spring Boot ecosystem. Second point, if you use IntelliJ and you create a new project, you can go on Spring Initializer and you can do exactly the same. Like here, you can choose Kotlin. Again, it's integrated into IntelliJ, so if you use Spring Boot, you can use Kotlin out of the box. And this is one of the stuff that you can do, like you have an application. And as I told you, you have this class. This is the same as you would do with Java stuff. And then you have this main function that sits outside the class, because you don't need to put into the class. It's a, it's a main function. It's a static function. It's not related to the application class. It's just the entry point. OK, let's create our first controller. Hello controller. And here I can have a controller. And this is the equivalent. I mean, even if you don't know Kotlin, you can read that. I mean, you have like a class, you have a REST controller, annotation, you have request mapping annotation, function hello, it returns a string, and then you return the stuff. Works for you? No question? Good. So now I can like start the S application. It works. So you might know about this uh, like controller in a tweet. So now it's, it's, it's 280 characters, but this is less than 140. So it's like a controller in a like old fashioned tweet. We can do better, however. Thing is, we can make it better because here there is a one-liner. And one-liner, you find them a lot, especially in controllers. So what we can do is we can say, oh, this is an expression body. So we can just write it like there is a shortcut, and you can write it like this. Should we compile and do the stuff? We'll do the same stuff. OK? Java is pretty stupid, because Java doesn't understand that here it, it will return a string. I mean, it's pretty obvious for everyone here, even if you are not like an experienced, seasoned developer, that it returns a string. But the Java compiler is too stupid. Kotlin compiler is much smarter, though. It understands that it returns a string. You cannot do it always, but when it's obvious, I mean, why tell it? Why repeat it? Still works. And if you use IntelliJ, IntelliJ infers it as well and hints you that it's an, a string. So, I mean, you don't miss anything. OK, and now I will create an, a, a new thing, stuff, and I will use like path variables. 
You're welcome to ask me questions if you need during the presentation or at the end if you want. So here I'm doing this kind of stuff. I have a path vari variable and I need to concatenate. That's how you would do it in Java, right? Right? I remember that I'm in Denmark and feedback is, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, however, in, um, in, in, in Kotlin, like in Scala, like in, in Groovy, you have string interpolation. So I prefer to write it like that. Especially interesting if you have like a big string and that you have stuff. Uh, I think they are trying to do that now in uh, Java 11. There seems to be this multi-line string. And now if I greet, uh, I will say Christian. Christian is very Danish. Okay. So it works pretty good. Uh, let's go further. Um, I will create a new controller again. Uh, I will call it welcome controller. So I will have a welcome controller and I will have a welcome class. So now I want to welcome someone and I want to create a new welcome. And I say, OK, I want to say hello, Christian, and welcome. And I didn't want to do that. I say, here is who. Okay, so again, it's Spring Boot, takes an object, and it, it, it serializes it in the, into JSON. And now what I want to do is, okay, I want by default that my welcome class here, the what is welcome. So if I don't pass the welcome message, I want it to be welcome, and if I pass, don't pass it, Sorry, if I pass it, I want it to be whatever it is. So in, in, in Java, probably what you would need to do it is to create another constructor, and you would link the first one to the second one, and then if you need other like parameters, you would like afterwards, like you would have like a chaos of constructors, each linking each other or not, or I mean it would be a mess. Because in Java, there is no such thing as a default parameter value, right? It would be great if we had that. Kotlin has it. Kotlin has default parameter values. Also, what uh, Kotlin has, I can show you. It's still welcome. Also, if you have multiple parameters in a method, be it a constructor or another method, and it's of the same type, like I want to create a person who has a who, a what, and why, and all those parameters have str are strings. Mm? Like DDD, people will tell you, ah, you cannot do that, it's wrong. You have to like wrap them. I mean, uh, again, more boilerplate stuff. Uh, okay. So the problem is, yeah, you can mistake one for the other. So if I want to create a person, should I pass the first name first or the last name first? I have to look at the documentation. It's not that great. Um, if you don't want to, to mess that, you, you could say it like that. And uh, of course, they can be reversed. No more issue about the order, because you use named parameter. It works. That's crazy, right? So it's much safer than in Java. Okay, so far, so good. 
I've shown you like Spring Boot's Web MVC stuff. But Spring, it's all about. Guys, you are recorded. It's all about, Spring is all about injection. Who said injection? Great, thanks. So let's inject some stuff. So I will inject a service because we always have a service. And I will inject a repository because we always have repository. So I will inject into my controller the service. And interestingly enough, you see that here, I didn't tell it about I didn't tell about it, but the class declaration and the constructor are merged. You don't need to have like the class declaration and then you have all your constructor. Most of the time you only have one single constructor. Most of the time. So they are merged. You can add additional ones, but by default the first one like is for free. And I will welcome people. And I will. Ah, it's not greeting that I wanted. It was welcome. And I will now use the service. Get all. Okay. So. This is Spring Data GPA. It will read stuff from the database. The database is considered to be created. Since this is becomes now an entity, I need to annotate it with entity. I need to annotate it with ID. And this should work, right? Yes, no, I'm Danish. OK. Third choice for everyone. I know about Norway and Sweden as well, don't worry. So now, if I ask the welcome, I have an issue. Because who knows about the GPS specifications? Yes, of course. What the issue there? Actually, I think you don't need it to be public, but you need a constructor with no arguments. Let's check afterwards. I'm not so sure. So here, I have to create a default constructor with default values. So here, empty string. Or what I could do is I could do it like that, which is really I hate it because now my primary key I can be null, which is not what I want. So I have for every time to like create a constructor with a default string, empty string. And now if I do it, it works. Did I get any mistakes on the Danish names or it's good? Try to find it this... No, not, not good. Which one is, is not good? Christian. Ah, there is an H. Ah, sorry about that. Don't tell him. Um, yeah, anyway, I had to, to break my design. Because now, if I have any function, mm, I, cre I can create a welcome. Like that. That sucks. I want it to be required. And GPA doesn't allow it. That's really bad. So what we can do is we can l try to hack the compiler like that. Basically, we add a dependency called the Kotlin Maven no org, which will create a no org constructor if it's required. And we say that 
we are using GPA, so it will check for every, sorry, welcome, it will check for every stuff that has this add entity and create a default constructor. So now I can get back, not sure if just restarting it is enough. So I don't have any default value, and it still works. So I hacked the build to create this argument for me. And the good stuff is, and that's very interesting, It's available for GPA, but not for me. Who knows how this is achieved? By? No, it's just because in the bytecode, this constructor is marked with the synthetic GVM keyword. This is not a Java keyword, this is a GVM keyword. So basically, this stuff is only available through reflection but not through regular RPI. Quite good. You might have noticed so far that uh, I used to have different classes into the same file. Because our class are so small, we can put a lot of them into the same file. We don't need to switch from file to file and just like lose a lot of space. We can put everything into the same place. There are some stuff that I don't like, however. I, I hate, if I can avoid, I hate annotations. I hate auto-wiring. I want it to be everything to be explicit because I want to understand how it flows from one stuff to the other. So some stuff like the welcome repository and the entity, they need to be scanned by Spring, but the rest, I wanted to manage it myself. So what I can do, I can now try to like switch the classes around and let's say that I want to have like a new package called auto, where I will have this auto welcome with M, please. Oh, it's a Java class. I didn't want a Java class. I wanted a Kotlin class. It's a file, so OK. And I will put the entity. I will also put the repository, because those need to be scanned. I will also put the controllers that I won't handle myself. So here I will put the greetings controller. I will also put the ELO controller that I don't need anymore. I will put it here. I can remove now the greetings controller. I can remove the hello controller. And I need the application, of course, because there are annotation on it. And also now I need to import that and I need to import that welcome repository. OK, I can remove the annotation on the service class because I will be the one to create it by myself. And now I can like add, uh, add bean. OK, and I will have a fun. This will return me a welcome controller. Welcome controller. Ah, sorry. And I can write now, I will create a welcome controller, which n requires a welcome service, which we are requires a like welcome repository, but the welcome repository is not under my control. So I will need to inject it here. 
and I can do it like that. No repository. And it's named welcome repository like that. And of course, now I don't need that. Uh, what does it tell me? Everybody is happy with that? Or do you have questions? Is it no question or is it Danish no question? First case or second case? The, the only thing that, that changes with Java is that I, I don't have the new keyword. So here it's as if I wrote new controller, new service, and then I inject the welcome repository. And this is pure Spring Boot. Hmm? It will be automatically injected for me because it will be part of the context. No, here it tells me that the welcome controller function must be overridable. Like here, I must have the open keyword. So you might have noticed the open keyword here and open keyword that I, I, I need to put here. And the issue there is that in Java, everything is like you can extend everything. You can override any method unless it is final. And you can extend any class unless it's final. Who uses final? Wow, guys, I'm impressed. Really. And how do you ensure in your design that you used final in the right place? Yeah, that's the second question that is a bit more awkward, right? <laughs> there is no way. I mean, you, you have no way. By default, in Kotlin, everything is final. But this is reversed. So by default, since everything is final, there is no final keyword, and there is the opposite keyword, open, which, which makes it possible to extend a class or override a function. However, Spring Boot, when you write this kind of configuration, it extends the class at runtime. It create uh, or and run, uh, runtime or compile time. I don't remember. And it also needs to extend this method to put proxies and all this stuff. Runtime it is. Um, so I need to every time I write a Spring Boot configuration class, I need to open it. Every time I need to create a bin method, I need to open it. This is super boring, guys. Boring, boring, boring. So normally it should work the same way. No, ah, it didn't work because, because, because uh, that could not be found. Um, what did I do? Welcome controller required a bin of type welcome service that could not be found. Let me check where it is. So this is outside the reach of that stuff. This is the welcome service. And did so it's outside the reach. Ah, yes. It cannot be this class. It should be the class that sits in this. It should be this class that is run, not the other one. So now, now it works to the end. The same stuff. Okay. Um, and so, what I wanted to tell you is that getting this open stuff is very, very boring. So. Um, Let's do the same. Let's hack into the build system so that every spring configuration is open and every bin method is open. And normally, I should do something like that. There is a dependency called all open, and I can have a compiler plugin called spring that will happily do it for me. And now, if I restart, So you see that even IntelliJ is smart enough to tell me, hey, this is not necessary anymore. And this is not necessary anymore, because now it will be added at compile time. Good. OK, last thing that I want to show you is who here likes annotations? Who loves annotations? Good. Um, I, I, 
don't dislike them, but of course they are used a lot more than is acceptable. And um, I mean, if you don't know what Spring Boot application means, you can check it. You see that, yeah, it's like Spring Boot configuration, but Spring Boot configuration, you have no clue what it does. So you have to look into the documentation and understand why and what and how. And that's a bit of an issue with, with that. So in, in, in the later stuff um, with Kotlin, and that is very, very, very interesting. You can have this like functional, there is a functional bean declaration DSL. So if I say like beans, um, now I will say like beans, and I can have the equivalent. So I can live have the welcome controller, welcome service ref, and you see there there is no annotation anywhere, and I will use this function in the application, so I can remove that. And now I don't remember what it is. No, sorry. Don't remember the shortcut register. Yes. And now I will use the method, the beans method, to like put the beans into the context. So now I remove the beans and I will use them. Of course, the stuff that is in auto, I cannot do anything against it because I mean controllers and a repository and entity they need to be automatically scanned. However, the stuff that I can put in something that is more readable is always good. Could you please restart? Yeah. And so it works. So this is brought to you by Spring Boot 2.0 with Kotlin integration. There is a Kotlin DSL that is dedicated to that. Questions about that? No questions. So this is the end of my talk. Um, if you want to know more about the Kotlin DSL, you can check the documentation. The, the integration is led by this guy. His name is Sebastien Deleuze. He's like a, a Kotlin fanboy and a, like a spring, uh, spring developer. And um, if you use Webflux? Who knows about Webflux? Okay, so a few hands. So basically, Webflux is the reactive counterpart of WebMVC. That means that you are using non-blocking reactive stuff. Um, there is like a complete DSL to do that. So you don't have any controllers anymore. You define what are called roots, and then you inject stuff that you need to inject. So this is, this might be a new way to do stuff, but be very careful about Webflux. It's not Spring MVC. That means that it will be, you have to be reactive all the way. You need to have your data store that is reactive, and so far the only data store that is reactive is MongoDB. That means that also you don't return entities, but you return flux or mono of entities, which means that in your front end, you also need to be reactive. So it, it, be careful about that, because it's not because it's super nice to read that it's, it's your use case. And just this week, uh, Sebastian like, published a new experimental stuff called Spring Fu for Spring Functional, but Spring Fu also like uh, Kung Fu, which is always fun. Um, we like, and now you can really like declare all your beans in any your application using Kotlin DSL. So it goes one step further. Now you don't need annotations anymore. And this is how you start your application. application dot run await equals true. And you declare your roots and blah, blah, blah. You declare the server, you declare everything through a Kotlin DSL. This is very, like, very brand new. I didn't play with it. I think it's interesting. It's a nice, it's a nice initiative. It needs to be watched. Takeaways. If you want to use Kotlin and Spring Boot, 
you have to set the open, not by hand, but using the compiler plugin. If you want to use GPA, you have to add a no orgs constructor, not by hand, but by using compiler plugin. Be careful of web flux. It's not what everybody wants and everybody needs, but if you need it, then you can go further. And the rest is just, I mean, I hope you, I convince you that the rest is just like really golden. The Ketika way is like Spring Boot loves Kotlin. Um, now it's time for some Q&A. You can read my blog, where I blog sometimes about Kotlin. You can follow me or ask me questions on Twitter. And the source code for uh, the demo that I showed you today is available at this URL here. So just in case, if you want to redo everything by yourself, and there is one commit for every feature that I showed you, so you can go step by step. There is even a bit more because, yeah, I, I, I mean, we are constrained by time. So now we have five minutes for questions or to go really quick to lunch before anybody is here and you don't have to queue. <laughs> yeah, I know how it works, right? It's the last slot before lunch. Yes, there is a question there. Okay, so the question is about what about testing, because basically in Java the problem is static method and final classes. The, I mean, again, I showed you that in general you can do without static methods. Right? You can just create your, 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 your function and you can use extension functions. So in that case, you don't write extension function for like massive huge amounts of code. If you need to like test something and it, you, you are calling a function, well, in that case, you have no choice but to do like the same with static methods. So you, you wrap it into one of your uh, one class and you change your design and then you can mock that class. I mean, there is no other way to do that. So you can apply the same methods that you already use in Java. If something is not testable, then you wrap it into an obj object and then you mock it. There is no real specific answer to Kotlin for that. There is an initiative to like, uh, use, um, like, I never used it to be honest, but um, that you can uh, have like Mosquito and Kotlin playing well together, even though yeah, Kotlin by default make everything final. So if you are uh, using Marquito, you should look into that. Other questions? Okay, I will be he here the whole day. I thank you for your attention. Uh, don't forget to vote and enjoy your lunch. <laughs>